Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing the brain once again. Because I'm essentially continuing my quest in trying to figure out how intelligence evolved, in trying to understand how brains evolved, and I guess to answer the question of, can they actually evolve elsewhere in the universe? But this time we're focusing on something right here on planet Earth. We're focusing on a difference of the brain between two different organisms. Well, technically, our brains, or vertebrate brains, very complex brains with very complex intelligence, and the not-so-complex brains from various invertebrates. Like this one you see right here, that comes from an organism that's over half a billion years old, that was recently discovered in one of the papers we're going to be discussing in this video. So earlier this month there was a paper that essentially talked about the evolution of the brain by studying the creature that was approximately 530 million years old. The creature that possibly looked like this. Although the actual fossil looks like this. And in this case, the scientists discovered that even back then, the nervous system was already divided into at least three parts. But most importantly, the brain was already separate. And this was even before the head evolved. Which kind of implied that the evolution of early brain most likely started even before heads became an actual organ. But brains were still a separate organ inside the body. But for some reason, eventually, all brains settled around the head area. Although even now, it's not entirely clear why. Maybe because heads were just more protected and brains were extremely important for functioning. But that was just the first discovery in terms of the brain evolution. But the main focus of this video is actually this paper. And this paper discovers something pretty intriguing. It discovers a really important factor that might actually determine if an organism develops a really complex brain and, as a result, complex intelligence. Complex intelligence reserved to only certain species on the planet. But in order to try to understand what the scientists are trying to solve here, and in order to understand the problem of the brain, we basically have to go back in time well, approximately 600 million years. During this period, some kind of a worm-like creature started to develop an early nervous system, but potentially the first primitive brain that would be located somewhere within its body, possibly near the mouth. And over time, this apparently became really successful. This particular animal, we don't really know what it was, started to slowly evolve into other species, and specifically, they started to evolve into two main categories. Some of these early creatures evolved a kind of a backbone. We refer to this as a vertebra, with some of these earlier creatures resembling something like this. This is actually a modern lancelet, but the scientists today believe that it resembles an ancestor of all of the vertebrates that evolved afterwards. Whereas the other worms did not evolve any backbone and remained invertebrates. Here this actually includes quite a large family, including things like mollusks, various types of arthropods, various types of insects, and even things like tardigrades, water bears. But interestingly, within a few million years, when it comes to the brain, the vertebrates, the creatures with the vertebra, the creatures with the spine, essentially developed really complex brains that only became more complex with time. Obviously, this is us as well. But also a lot of other creatures, even creatures like fish, that do possess really complex brains. You might want to check out one of the previous videos that actually talks about a fish with very complex communication. It should be in the description. But when it comes to invertebrates, they didn't really evolve complex brains at all. Their brains remained really, really, really simple. Which actually does create an interesting question. Why not? What happened to these creatures versus these creatures that allowed vertebrates, that allowed us, to evolve super complex brains, but not these guys? And this is, of course, on top of the other facts, such as the fact that the brain itself is actually a fluke of evolution. So in order to understand if brains and complex intelligence can actually evolve somewhere else out there, we have to try to answer these questions. We have to try to understand what made brains of vertebrates like us so special. And there is potentially a really interesting answer recently discovered in this paper. Not all invertebrates remain simple brains. At least one type of invertebrates actually did evolve super complex brains after all. And based on the title of the video, you probably guessed which ones. We also have cephalopods, octopuses, squids, cuttlefish, a complex invertebrate that evolved complex brains independently in the last 500 million years. And the question is of course, how or why? Why octopuses and so many vertebrates, but not other invertebrates? Not, for example, butterflies. Not, for example, ladybugs. And that's pretty much the question tackled in this recent paper. And obviously it's a pretty tough question to tackle. As a matter of fact, how would you even define this complex intelligence? What makes us think that octopuses are actually intelligent? Well, there are quite a lot of recent papers on top of that that actually do discover 
Various cephalopods are ridiculously smart. For example, you might have heard of the marshmallow test before. It's actually a very famous psychological experiment where a few kids were given marshmallows, or actually were shown marshmallows, and were given a choice. Either eat one right now, or wait just a few minutes, actually quite a lot of minutes, and it will give you something much better. It was testing patience, but it was also testing the idea of planning. A complex brain is able to anticipate and plan, and is able to delay immediate gratification in order to receive something better later on. The actual experiment basically showed us that kids who were able to kind of wait a little bit before they eat the marshmallow would actually then even become extremely successful later in life. But more importantly for our topic is that this was also tested with other animals. It was tested on various birds, specifically corvids, such as magpies, where they actually did pass the test. It was also tested on chimps, and they also passed the test. And most recently, it was tested on cuttlefish, one of the more complex cephalopods known to be able to communicate with its partners, and actually even humans. As a matter of fact, I have a personal experience of meeting one of these things, and it was desperately trying to communicate with me using colors. True story. But anyway, I have no idea what it was saying. Important fact here is that they definitely passed the test, with pretty much all of the cuttlefish passing the test with flying colors. And this of course implies that they also developed complex intelligence, and thus complex brains. And so something in the family of cephalopods allowed all of them to develop complex brains, but not other invertebrates. And that something has to be similar to vertebrates that develop these brains as well. And though there is no clear answer yet, the answer seems to be related to a very specific type of very unique RNA molecules that some creatures possess. The molecules that generally resemble something like this. Now these are not mRNA molecules or messenger RNA, and they're not DNA molecules at all. They're known as microRNA, miniaturized RNA molecules whose true function is still being understood even today. And generally speaking, all of them seem to be relatively small, about 20 to 23 nucleotides in length, and seem to perform one single function. They're responsible for silencing RNA molecules, the molecules that are then responsible for producing various proteins our bodies are made out of. But these microRNA molecules are definitely involved in RNA silencing, although it's quite clear that they have a lot of other functions as well because our bodies, or actually bodies of all vertebrates, contain so many microRNA molecules in them. For example, it's believed that there are over 2000 microRNA types in human genome alone, with vast majority of them having still unknown functions, but with many of them affecting RNA to some extent. At the same time, a typical invertebrate such as a snail or a worm, or even a plant that has these as well, will usually contain a relatively small number of microRNA molecules, something that at first might only seem like a coincidence, until you analyze the brains of cephalopods. And that's exactly what the scientists here did. Even compared to some of the vertebrates, such as fish, birds, or even frogs, octopuses have way more microRNA families and significantly more than every other invertebrate, with the recent findings even suggesting that the majority of newly discovered microRNA families were actually in the neural tissue, and mostly in the brain. And since here we're talking about thousands of different invertebrate species, with these ones being the only ones in the possession of complex brains and a huge number of families of microRNA, the correlation here is a little bit difficult to ignore. Now obviously this is not a cause and effect discovery, but it still suggests that microRNA potentially might be the reason why certain animals develop extreme intelligence, very likely playing a fundamental role in the development of complex brains. But here's the thing, we don't really exactly know what microRNA molecules do in our bodies, except for of course modifying certain RNA molecules. Now maybe they're only responsible for RNA editing, and maybe it's the amount of editing that somehow leads to complex brains and complex intelligence. For all we know, maybe it's actually quite the opposite. Maybe because there are so many microRNA in the brains of octopuses, they actually had to come up with alternative techniques in order to create even more diverse RNA molecules, which then resulted in more proteins. But the conclusion is still the same. Higher number of families of microRNA molecules seems to be directly correlated with the complexity of the brain and the complexity of intelligence, something that other invertebrates don't seem to have. So definitely a super intriguing discovery, but not really a clear answer to the complexity of the brain and to the complexity of intelligence. Humans and octopuses definitely have this in common, but what exactly does this do? What does microRNA do to make all of this complexity? And so on that note, it's a pretty intriguing discovery, 
but unfortunately leaves us with a bit of a mystery that doesn't provide enough answers. So the answer to the similarity between humans, complex vertebrates and of course cephalopods seems to be kind of genetic. But exactly how those genetic components influence the evolution and the formation of brains is still super unclear. It will probably become clear with time. For now, just another mystery. On that note, check out some of the previous videos on this topic in the description below and watch out for more videos in the future as well because we're going to be continuing this quest of discovering intelligence and whether it exists anywhere else. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying one of the person t shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye. It was also tested on chimps, and they also passed the test. Oh no, you're pooping on your Oh no, you're eating your own poop.